In early May 2024, Microsoft shut down multiple studios, including Tango Gameworks, Arcane Austin, and two other teams at Bethesda. Worst part of all of it? Microsoft ain't done yet. So far, it's limited to ZeniMax and Bethesda Studios but Microsoft is currently going through a widespread cost-cutting initiative that still isn't finished. Some men just want to watch the world burn. This is where Ninja Theory and Hellblade 2 come in. Tango was just closed despite having an incredible, highly reviewed game called Hi-Fi Rush, and honestly, the game was a breath of fresh air. What shot does Hellblade 2 have? Well, let's dig deeper into Ninja Theory and figure out where they fit into Microsoft's long-term strategy. At this point, I don't have to explain to you that Microsoft wants you on Game Pass. They want your playtime. They want your hours. They want your life. Your soul is mine. The longer you stay within the Microsoft ecosystem, the more likely you are to buy something. At E3 2018, Microsoft acquired multiple studios including Playground Games, Undead Labs, Compulsion, and even opened a new studio called The Initiative. They are currently working on Perfect Dark. Somehow that studio is still alive despite nothing but bad news about The Initiative and Perfect Dark. Most importantly to the story though, this is when Ninja Theory was bought. It's worth noting that at this point, the original Hellblade had already come out, Senua's Sacrifice, it was reviewed highly, critics and players alike both really enjoyed the game. So after that, Ninja Theory had a little bit of clout and they were bought, I know, I know, you're wondering how much? Well, Ninja Theory was purchased for 112 million US, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, this was in, this was 2018. This was pre-pandemic numbers. So on top of getting Hellblade, you also got Ninja Theory, and they are known for what is called a triple I. They are a triple I studio, which is like triple indie. So instead of the triple A, you get triple I. They commit to making high quality games at a reasonable budget because they know most studios don't want those high budget AAA games because they might fail. And from there, basically the team did a few VR ports. It wasn't anything crazy, but their first new game since going over to Microsoft was the most Game Pass game of Game Pass. It is called Bleeding Edge. Bleeding Edge is a hero shooter. Everyone wanted their Overwatch, right? And this is what Microsoft was like, hey, we want you to try this. I'm all for going outside of your own wheelhouse and trying new things, but this is not what Ninja Theory needed to be doing. Game was fine, it was okay, but you need to do better than okay in the hero space. It's still a Alive, but it's not getting any support. Thankfully, they would then move on to Hellblade 2. At the Game Awards of 2019, we'd get our first glimpse of Hellblade 2. And pay attention to this next part because it's going to be important later. Phil Spencer happily flaunted his next generation console alongside Hellblade 2 to show just how realistic games could be. The decision to show it this early is one that I'm torn on. I don't know if it was a Ninja Theory call or a Microsoft call. My guess is either way it would ultimately had to have been shown because you want to show the best stuff for your new console. Problem is, we don't get to play the game for another five years. From there, we would wouldn't see the game again for another two years and it would also be at the game awards we'd get a little bit of gameplay as a group would send in what would go take on a giant and it was looking good it's i mean every trailer of this game looks pretty freaking good but this is actual gameplay and we were getting hyped and then finally in 2023 at the xbox showcase we would see senua one more time and she would give a release date of 2024 it would ultimately end up being may 21st which just happens to be my birthday Shortly after killing Tango and the other Bethesda studios, Matt Booty, the head of Xbox, would come out and say that we need games like Hi-Fi Rush. We need games, smaller games that win awards, which was of course ironic because you just cut the game that you were literally talking about. The studio that designed the games that you're talking about was literally just fried. So everyone had a field day with that one. And to be clear, Hellblade 2 might as well be a lock for games as an impact at the Game Awards. And it's definitely gonna win at least one BAFTA, if not multiples. This game is designed to win awards, just not going to be a game of the year winner. However, Hi-Fi Rush got an 87 on Metacritic, won multiple awards, and the studio was still shut down. What makes Ninja Theory and Hellblade 2 different? Is it just the fact that they're tackling the difficult subject of mental health and making it into a game? Probably not. But canning a team like them is not a good look for PR. Like, Tango was bad, this would be like nuclear levels of bad. While Hellblade 2 will surely get some Game Pass numbers, it's not Call of Duty, Diablo, or even Starfield. The strength of Ninja Theory comes from their philosophy. First off, the team is small. With roughly only 120 employees as of 2021, let's assume that number's probably been boosted, especially with Hellblade 2 now coming out. They needed to up those numbers. Like, um, 
three, three, four, three, four times maybe. Yeah, pump those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers in this racket. But while the team is smaller in size, they are masters at their craft. The casual gamer loves a showpiece, and Hellblade 2 is that and more. There's a reason they always show car games when they show a new console. Car games always look amazing because you got to design cars, not moving people with facial animations and all that. And as long as Xbox has Ninja Theory, they have those guys that can something that'll get people talking like, did you see that yesterday? Yeah, that looked amazing. That looked so realistic. Something that's going to go on Twitter and people be like, whoa, is that actually a game or is that real life? Ha ha ha, you know, stuff like that. We talked about Ninja Theory being a triple I team, which means that they have a smaller budget to make these quality products. When Ninja Theory talked about being a triple I team, something I noticed and that kept sticking into my head was this quote, a middle ground between low budget, pure indie development and triple A projects. And in a time of cost cutting, that is huge. Being able to do a budget, stay within that budget and make a quality game is exactly what Microsoft wants in a team. You're there for me, I'm there for you. You respect the budget, you don't go over, and I will fucking kill for you, man. We're a team. Uh, and they also have this thing called the Insight Project, and it's supposed to focus on mental health, but the website hasn't been updated since 2019. I'm going to assume it was just a victim of COVID. I don't know if it's still going or not. Not a factor in this decision. With the embargo lifted and the game released, now we just have to wait and see how gamers are going to feel about it. The game is currently at an 81 on Metacritic, but that could literally shift down or up after a few more reviews. I ended up giving it a 9. I fell in love with the game, but I'll be honest, after the first three hours of the game, I was looking at like a 7. This game is a slog, but the journey, in my opinion, was worth it. I spoke about Phil Jackson in my last video. I finished the book now, 11 Rings. He's an NBA coach that led the Bulls and Michael Jordan to six championship rings. I finished the book, so I'm going to go back to it. I'm going to draw from that well, and we're going to talk about Rodman, Dennis Rodman this time. On the court, Rodman was one of the best rebounders and defenders ever to have played the game in the 90s at least. Uh, he was also one of basketball's biggest bad boys, so negotiating with him was a bit tricky. When Phil met with Rodman, basically Rodman was like, well, how much am I going to get paid? How much are you going to pay for the best defensive player in the NBA? Phil responded in a way that really only Phil could, and he said, the Bulls do not pay for promise. They pay for production. Rodman lived up to his potential, the Bulls would take care of him. And I think that's the exact position that Ninja Theory is in right now. Despite what gamers think, I believe this is exactly what Microsoft wanted out of them. Obviously, I don't have the deals, I don't have the budgets, I don't have the time frame. Five years is a long time to get an eight hour video game out, but it is technically sound. And thankfully, since I actually waited until the game was out to see the Metacritic, I also got this rumor that is currently floating around the internet that Microsoft has already greenlit the next Ninja Theory product. Now, greenlit does not mean Safe. We have had plenty of canceled projects in the last couple of years, but it's a good sign at least. Another thing to factor in here is that they were bought for 117 million. Bethesda was 7.8 billion. That is 65 Ninja Theories. So no, Ninja Theory will not be closing down in the near future, but I do understand the fear. And if we think about it from Microsoft's point of view, they just got their game out. We're roughly the midpoint of this generation of consoles. By the time they're showing the next one, assuming Xbox still in the console business, Ninja Theory should have their next game ready. Something else to show off. And you know, you can come back to this video and be like, wow, Johnny knows what he's talking about. That'll do it, Pig. That'll do. Anyways, we'll wrap the video up there, but what do you guys think? Do you think Ninja Theory is going to stick around? Do you want them to stick around? Have you played Senua? Is there anything about Ninja Theory you even like? Are you sick of seeing their games? Let me know down in the comments below, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Later, Gators.